good evening. Hopefully um, that will be us started and ready to go live now. Any second now, it should come up. Oh, here we are, right here. Excellent. And are you there? Yep. That's good. No, I'm not. That's no, last not. week's one. <laughs> no, last week. Oh, you can That's last, last week. week. <laughs> nope. <laughs> There's a few people see. joining in. That's good. If me, ready. I don't know. Every week it's different. Every it week. Is. Um, last week I went into videos and got in straight away. Did you? Yeah. Oh, good posts. Interesting. I'm on straight away. Maybe they don't want There's to. There's lots of other people watching. There's Linda and Mum and June and Gordon. I don't know if I want to be in there or not. That's the thing. Oh dear, I've come all together. My goodness. I know. It's all very complicated. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, let's. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> okay, well, we've got more, more of a problem than we had last week. Oh, no, I'm not. You're out again. I'm out again. <laughs> it's you causing the problem, isn't it? Absolutely, it probably is. Check right. your internet connection. Check my internet connection. I am che I'm checked. I'm connected. <laughs> we are connected. We are connected. Right, there we go. That's me. I'm in. Yes. 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 <laughs> there we go. Oh. That's what I'm saying. That's me. <laughs> as soon as you start messing about. Oh, right. Okay. So it's my fault. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> really don't know. Okay. And we're still waiting. There we go. This is a long wait. We're down to six. Eight. It's, it's, well. Carol, Joy, Lilius. Elizabeth. Roslyn. Here we are. There's quite a few people trying to, to get on. So hopefully we'll be able to, yes. Yeah, yes, a lot of people back again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Announcement, Sergeant Major. <laughs> well, welcome. Have your cup of tea um, at any time. Um, don't pause us because we're live tonight. Um, this week, what have we got on this week? Tuesday night, half past seven, we've got the Home League. We're restarting the Home League, so that's really good. And then on Wednesday, um, we have Food Bank, <laughs> between nine and twelve. Then we have um, the We Care between quarter to one and half past two. I'll tell you about that in a wee minute. And um, band practice at eight o'clock. And then food bank again on Friday between nine and 12. And then our in-person worship, half past 10, Inverness Salvation Army next Sunday. And then we'll be on here at six. Um, this week, uh, we've had a new kitchen put in at the hall. Yes, so indeed. that has made life a bit challenging, <laughs> but it's been worth it. Um, so. so one of the things that we were kind of worried about was whether we were going to be able to have any activities um, and of course we had no kitchen well I think on Wednesday it was kind of half in but not I can't remember nowhere no, near, nowhere near, near that we could have used so we decided that we would have a teddy bear's picnic at the week here um, and we had an amazing time and we had another new child this week so that was really good um, and uh, we had not personally there was another <laughs> child came along another child came along and um, we had rugs on the floor and the mum's granny's granddad all sat down and had a picnic together so that was really good and uh, it was good fun it was and it seemed like we had loads there well we did have loads there so it was really good and uh, hello Caroline good to see you hope oh, Caroline was at the, the teddy bear's picnic so <laughs> She wasn't very well this morning, but she's okay now. <laughs> Good. 
Good, good. Okay. That's us. I think so. That's us caught up with everything. So, uh, please please continue to play for a week here. I know that we'll probably have one or two more new ones this week. That would be really good. But we have a, a group that we can cope with, and that's good. Yes. Yeah. And lots of fun. And a fun picnic it was, Caroline It says. certainly was. It <laughs> certainly was. And we all managed to get back up off the floor. We did. We did. It's quite entertaining, and thankfully, I don't think anybody had a, a camera out taking pictures of us trying to get back up off the floor. I don't think so. No. There we are. Well, shall we begin? We certainly. Good. Well, yeah. Yes? Yes. Good. We're going to start with number three. Number three in the songbook. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Okay. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little brother to Let's just join together in prayer. Father, this evening we have sung those words and we are reminded that you have created this beautiful world for us. And we thank you, Lord, in these past few days that in the sunshine we have been able to enjoy some of the beauty round about us. And perhaps there's been nights when we've seen thunder and lightning and we are reminded about your, your powerful glory and majesty. And uh, we, we just thank you for all that you've done for each one of us. Father, this evening we come together, a group of your people, scattered all around the world, and we thank you because no matter where we are or what we do, you love us each one. Today, Lord, we are mindful of those who perhaps are hurting, those perhaps who are ill. We pray, Lord, for those who have been believed that you will comfort them, those perhaps who are ill, that you will lay your healing hand on them. And Father, we just pray that uh, you will come close to those who need you in a very special way. As we share together in this worship this evening, we pray, Lord, 
that day as we chat together and as we sing songs that we'll think about the love that you have for us. But Lord, we just pray that as we open your word, that we might open our hearts to you and may you teach us and may we learn something new of your love this evening. And so just be with us and all we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to turn to song number 45. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. reading for this evening and uh, this evening we are reading from St John's Gospel chapter 6. St John's Gospel chapter 6 and we're commencing to read at the first verse. After this Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went, because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he had already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God and distributed, it, distributed them to all the people. Afterwards he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told the disciples, Now gather the leftovers, so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expected. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. Amen. 
we're going to return to that later. Um, obviously, that's where uh, the, the theme for our meeting this evening has come from. We're going to turn now to number five. Number five in the songbook. Now, this is one that I really didn't know. And as I sing it through, you probably realise that I'm still not particularly sure of it as well. But the words fitted in so well with what I wanted to th think about this evening. Be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever betide, God will take care of you. Salvation Army song because it is copyright of the General of the Salvation Army. It is, and the person who wrote it was born a hundred years before me. Yes, <laughs> and died in 1948, so... Which is even before you were born. Even before I was born, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not a new song, but it's a new one on me. Yes. Or, if I've sung it before... I I've have, forgotten. well, I have heard it. Um, I've forgotten it. I think I've sung the, sung the chorus, but there we go. Yeah. 
the words fit in very well with what I want to think about this evening. So, yes, the feeding of the 5,000? <laughs> How put, many thousand? <laughs> well, I, I put down on the um, the meeting plan for this evening, feeding the five, 15,000, rather. Um, yeah. Just as a starter for our thoughts, uh, those of you who've watched before will realise that, you know, over uh, the time that we were in our previous appointment, um, there were 15,000 um, people served, probably some of them several times over, but 15,000 served for the food bank over the time of COVID when we were stationed in Infinity and Bucky. So, how did we manage it? <laughs> I really don't know. Um, I just remember the first Tuesday of COVID, um, we 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 did have them come into the hall because there was nothing that we could do, but we wouldn't let them in the door. It was mm -hmm. a few of them weren't very happy about that, but never mind. Um, and we gave parcels out at the at the door with our phone number, um, and asked them to, to order for next week. You could either phone in or you could message, um, our Facebook page, um, Bucky Facebook page, um, mm -hmm. and that way then. The or and it was amazing how quickly some of them ordered. It was amazing how some of them were very, very last minute. Some of them even after we had been out. Some of them, you know, the day after that we would just get something ready and say, okay, but this is this is uh, the day that we do it, a Tuesday. So, yeah. <clears throat> but certainly those first few weeks were absolute pandemonium. There was three was of us, I such think. such a steep, steep learning yeah. curve. I think there was, there was three of us. Yes. Um, you, me, and Elizabeth, uh, because we, we, but then we began to realise that there's no way we could. But in the early days, we were trying to keep Elizabeth as far away from the two of us as, as well. You know, it, it didn't seem particularly friendly, um, but but we were trying to keep us yeah. all uh, as safe as possible. And of course, nobody knew what COVID no. really was. Nobody knew if there would ever be a treatment found or. You know, was this the end of life as we knew it? Um, and how long we were going to have to continue living in that way. So the, the food bank, we were, went from about 12 to 14 people um, being served each week to suddenly within about three weeks, if, if as long as that, we were up to 80 yes. people being served. Yeah. We didn't have that kind of stock in, did we? No, we didn't. And... Um, we used to, we were so used to going to Tesco's and just buying, um, uh, you know, whatever we needed for the week. And I mean, there were people who would hand stuff in, and that was really good. Um, and so I remember, and in the very early days of COVID, you know, they were they were not happy about two and you going shopping together, and mm -hmm. you were to try and, and keep and keep uh, distance and everything. And then of course I start shoveling a whole load of tins of stuff, something into the trolley. And the manager went absolutely spare at me. Um, and I remember saying to him, I'm the Salvation Army. I'm trying to feed people. <laughs> with the, you know, this the is feedback. not for, for it's me. It's not for me. Individual. I don't need all this. But, you know, we're trying to help people. So in the end, he said, OK, I'll come round the shop with you. Um, and, you, you know, you can tell me what you need. So I remember saying, well, I need that. Well, you can only have two tins of that. He says, yes. but I can give you 12 tins of that. And it was something that people just... It was all the stuff that yeah, people didn't like want. 12 tins of prudence, because nobody really wanted prudence. But I took them, because I thought, well, well somebody... Well, the panic about the toilet rolls as well. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody might be glad of them. So it's all the things that nobody was really buying. And I was, we were trying to, to shop on a budget. Um, and in the end, we, we suddenly realised we are going to have to try and go... We couldn't use the local supermarkets, really. Really, no. And I mean, we had... We had to start with, we did have the box at Tesco's, then we had the box at Lidl's and the box at the co-op, and that was all very good. And the box in Finecti. In the shop in Finecti. Yes. If you're ever passing through Finecti, just drop into the shop say and hello. get something. Yeah, say hello to Graham and John. Yes. Two brothers. But they were amazing. I, I mean, I, we were pretty much into COVID when this basket appeared, um, and it said Food Bank Bucky, and I thought, well, I don't know if that's us or not, but I'm not going to say anything. And then everybody, like, I know where you live in Finecti, you know, <laughs> kind of style thing. And uh, the door went, and here was Graham at the door, and he said, are you, 
you are the ones that are doing the food bank, aren't you? And we said, yeah. He says, well, I've got a book full of stuff. He says, the basket in the shop is for you guys. So that was great because we knew then and we, we could go and we could pick the mm -hmm. stuff up. Um, and the amount of stuff that we got. But we discovered that people were saying to, to him, I really don't know what to put in this, this basket. If I give you money, would you get something? So he used to ask me, what are you needing? And then it would be like the tins of fruit that we couldn't get. Because by the time we got to the cash and carry, things were pretty... It wasn't um, that we were too lazy to get out of our beds to get to the cash and carry. It was that they were allowing people who had the, people. the shops yeah, to, to go in first. first. And we had to wait yeah. until, I think, was it 11 o'clock? In yeah. The day before yeah, we could yeah. go in. By which time, all the goodies were gone. Absolutely. But then... Also, the Salvation Army, <clears throat> there were so many divisions that had hubs, and we had one in Aberdeen, and, and Olive and Dennis and Peter very kindly brought carloads of stuff through to us. Um, and so we soon had quite a bit of stuff, which was good. And people were very good. There was there was kids that were dancing and raising money and buy, or giving us the money or buying stuff for us. Um, and the community really worked together. Um, ever so grateful to the local supermarkets, the likes of Tesco's, the co-op used to deliver to us, mm -hmm. and to Lidl's, all the bakery stuff, it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so... Bucky Thistle. Bucky Thistle, yeah, they, they the, gave us... The women's team, the supporters club, and the football club all raised money for us. And uh, all of that helped over that time. Then there was the person who made uh, sculptures out of cutlery, and raised a thousand pounds for us. Yeah. He, he raised a, a great deal of money for a number of different charities, but he raised a thousand pounds for us. Uh, and that really, really helped because obviously we were having to buy things and prices were a little bit more than what we had been used to yeah. paying as well. Yeah. But right back at the start, it was that moment where we could have folded in and said, we cannot afford this. Cannot do this. But that was when our experience and trust in God came to the fore, where we, we remember the lessons from our very first Christmas, which we've, we've spoken about before, uh, of how we, we suddenly had to feed an extra, how many was it? 20? 24. 24 people on Christmas Day, and it was Christmas Eve, about four o'clock, when we got um, word of that. We knew that God would provide, because he did miraculously then and he, you know we believe that if God wants something done he's going to provide what we need to do it. Ours was just to be faithful and we're so grateful that we, we were able to learn that lesson early on and able to remember that lesson so many years later. Yeah. yeah. So they were the disciples in a very similar predicament they hadn't seen this happen before. And we have to remember that God will provide. He supplies over and over and over again. Now, the cupboards start to look a little bit bare in Inverness. Yes. From time to time, yes. the cupboards start to look bare. But God will provide. If he wants this to continue, yes. then he will provide. I don't, I don't think any of us really know how things are going to go. And I think we thought that once COVID kind of eased, that... We maybe we didn't need the food bank anymore. Mm. But the, this week the numbers were a bit lower. But we think maybe they got money this week. We're not sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what's a little bit lower now? We had, I think we had 30, 35 both days, I think. So that's about 70 yeah. instead of about 80. 80 or 90, yeah. You know. It's been up as far as 90. So, um, and different people. You know, some people we don't see for a while. And we're only one group supplying yeah. in Inverness, not just us. You know, we're very much aware of that and yeah. very much aware that we are part of something far, far bigger. But God wants us to do something and God will continue to use that work. Yeah. Here we are. Shall we continue? continue? Yes. We're going to turn to song number 42. Psalm 42, let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord, for he is kind, for his mercy shall endure, ever faithful, ever sure. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord, for 
he is kind, for his mercy shall endure, ever faithful, ever sure. Let us place his name abroad, for of God's he is the God, for his mercy shall endure. to speak. I gave her a wave from the back door and uh, walked across the river via a bridge. <laughs> just <laughs> you in did case. walk on the water. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> um, walked across the bridge to the other side to a uh, church there, to Nesbank Church, because we were having the Kirkin of the Council. The Kirkin of the Council. It's the start of another council session and uh, they gather in the church and we pray God's blessing upon them there. Now, the, the person at the, the church there is a, a local minister. They're just waiting for uh, another minister to be appointed. Um, so the local minister had not actually taken part in the Kirken of the Council in Inverness, so it was all new to him. And I thought I was being treated rather grandly when I was welcomed at the door and escorted right down to the front, escorted through to the vestry, wow. no less, to meet the minister. And then I realised that I was the ecumenical representation. <laughs> it, it was supposed to be something in which all of the, the ministers of Inverness were to be invited to take part or send along someone to represent the congregation. And uh, I was it, because there were a number of people who weren't well. And... Uh, I, I had a scripture reading to share, but also the um, the priest from the, the Catholic Church round the corner from us, he also had a, a, a reading to share, but he wasn't well. So the minister wasn't sure what to do, who to ask, would it be right, the right thing to ask someone from the council? Would it be the right thing to ask someone from his own congregation? What would be the right thing? So I said, well... Where are the two scripture readings on the, the altar of service? He said, one after the other. I said, well, why not? I'm going to be up there anyway. I'll do the two of them, if that's all right. And he said, well, that just saves me worrying about it anymore. So there we were. I had the opportunity to take part in the council and share two scripture readings, um, two scripture readings there. And we were able to ask for God's blessing upon them, upon all those who gathered for worship there. And that day we went back to the townhouse and uh, shared in a little bit to eat before we had to continue with our day. Yes. So the poor minister this morning had to kind of make ends meet with what he had at his disposal, which wasn't a great deal. <laughs> um, there are many, many times when we have to make ends meet. Can you think of some of those times? 
some of those times when we needed to make ends meet, yeah, when the army decided to change the date they were going to pay us. Mm. <laughs> we would remember that well. Yeah. So we were being paid two weeks in arrears and two weeks in advance. We used to get paid in the middle of the month. Mm-hmm. And and the I think the employees used to get paid at the end and they decided that everybody should get paid at the end of the month. So we had six weeks where we didn't get any money. And the kids were eight and ten, if that. Mm. And everything started to go wrong. The tumble dryer broke down and... And I needed the tumble dryer because we lived in Greenock at the time and it rained all the time. <laughs> Sorry, I know there's one or two from Greenock uh, it, watching. And um, It does rain rather a lot. Yeah. But, you know, we got there. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we did it, but we got there. We uh, got a I, bit of help. Yeah, and I actually discovered, not at that point, but a little later on, that um, there were school trips that the kids just wouldn't go on because they didn't think we could afford for them to mm-hmm. go um, and we could have... They didn't tell us about it. They didn't them. tell us about it. And you were able to pay that up. So, you know, we never, ever said to them, we don't have any money. <laughs> it wasn't that we didn't have any money. It was just making ends meet. It was making yeah. ends meet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it, way back beyond that, um, where I would try and make something out of whatever was about. So at one point, my dad worked filling cigarette machines. And... They changed over from wooden cases for the cigarette machines to metal cases. And suddenly there was a whole supply of wooden cases. So I could have been an upcycler here, really. So one of the one of the book one of the cigarette machines became a bookcase. Now that that was a kind of sensible thing to do. It was an easy thing to do. Put the shelf in the middle and suddenly I had a bookcase. The other thing I did was make a chair for the dog okay yeah yeah we the cigarette machine down took the front off of it so it, the front was on the, the bottom um, took that and i nailed that to the back and there was a cushion that went up from an old metal framed chair that i was able to put together and make a, a new chair out of the cigarette machine yeah. Have you done anything else like that? I've not done anything like that. Nothing like that? Nothing no? like that. Um, I've gone to the cupboard and think, what are we going to have for tea? Moving teas. That, you know, moving teas. Now, moving that's teas. something special. Yeah, you know, you may come a up with whatever you've got there. So the kids used... But wasn't that the kids didn't really like where we were. It was just that it was going to be interesting as mum emptied the freezer, what were we going to get for tea? Mm-hmm. So... Um, we used to tell them it's a moving tea. Sometimes we have a moving tea when we're not moving. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, just whatever's in the cupboard at the time. Um, do you think? But I mean, I, I do remember once making a spaghetti bolognese and it was when, well, I don't the supermarkets still do it. It's like the savers, the savers labels. So the labels all look the same. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I opened what I thought was a tin of tomatoes and it was a tin of beans <laughs> so um, so we ended up with beans and tomatoes in, in the spaghetti bolognese but that's the kind of like a moving meal but it wasn't a moving meal that was by mistake <laughs> yes. you see that kind of reminds me of um, the haggis broth oh yes at Thurzo yes. Joan the cook um, she <laughs> She we must have had a burnt supper or something, or she must have had it was haggis at the the lunch it, club. It wouldn't have been burnt. It, it would have been um, St Andrews. Andrews Day, the end of November. And we had we'd had haggis at the lunch club, and through the winter, the cook and her family used to do for their talent scheme um, winter warmers, where they did soup and toasties and stuff like that. And we came in this one day, and she she laughed, and as she said. I don't know whether to serve this or not. And we said, what she says, well, I had a plate of haggis sitting up. <laughs> sitting up on and top it, of the cooker. On top of the cooker, and it's fallen in the soup. And I don't know what to do with it. Oh, do you know what? Just serve it up. We tasted it. Yeah, we said it, it tastes, tastes lovely. It tastes absolutely fine. So she did. So every week they wanted haggis broth. 
It's a mistake. <laughs> it started off as a mistake, but then it had to be repeated week Absolutely, after week. Absolutely, because people asked for it. And so. I, I think that that's how many of the greatest inventions in life Absolutely. have come about. Absolutely. Make, it's making use of the resources that you have. The resource was there. It happened. It happened. Could have, could have just chucked it out. Yeah. Absolutely. And wasted all that. Wasted all that soup. And it actually, it tasted lovely and it was good. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yes. So I'm sure for many of us, there have been different situations, different times when we've come across something. Sometimes it's by accident. Something. Sometimes it's by design. We see a new um, use for something. You know, Ola and I were terrible when we did messy church, walking around some of the shops and we would see something and suddenly you could see the eyes just light up <laughs> and realise that actually we could use that. Um, for example, I, the, the tin foil tree in, in the shop suddenly became the Sea of Galilee. Yes. You know, that that's ideal. That's going to hold a fair amount of water, get some in paper, we can fold that up, make paper boats and float them on that. And we did yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. We, so we could find a different use for something entirely, find a solution to the problem. And I think there's a lot of that is actually going to be needed in the world today. You know, because the world is in a bit of a mess and we need to find ways of reusing things. Watching yeah. the television yeah. sometimes in programmes that reuse old things. Yeah. And sometimes they spend an absolute fortune. They'd be better just to yeah. spend the money on something yeah. new, Absolutely. you would think. But we don't have the resources to no. keep doing that. No. I, I remember when we came to Inverness, first of all, at the food bank, Jessie, um, <laughs> we had like 10 lentils and 10 vegetables and stock cubes and things and and shoot and shoot and I think barley was the a tins of barley was the other thing. It was tins of barley, that's what it was. She goes, There you go, there's your tin of barley, tin of vegetables, there's your stock cubes, go make a pan of soup. <laughs> so it's using you know, what what we have. Seeing what's there and see what the possibilities yeah. are. And I think that was one of the things that when we first did food bank, even before we, we got to Bucky, I think even at Airdrie, was a three three day parcel that we initially started off with and it was right what are the things that would make a meal so pasta and sauce or rice and sauce or you know a tin of a tin of chili or a tin of curry that you know that would be a dinner um or meatballs meatballs <laughs> tin of stew or tin of tatties you yes. know so you know it was if people could use their imagination the way that we did, but then everybody's mind doesn't work the way that mine does, but never mind, thankfully. Probably a good idea, but yes, we, we need a variety, don't we? Absolutely. And I'm sure for many of you, there are times when you've had to make do and mend, or find a new use for something, uh, and uh, find a way that you can actually not waste certain things. Yeah. 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 We're going to turn to song number 30, number three zero. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength as our labours increase. To added afflictions he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials he multiplies peace. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength as our
conversation um, is there's Agnes saying that she used to do cooking classes mm. for the food bank to show them how they could make meals and that's something that's important to mm-hmm. try and help people make ends meet. Hi Agnes, it's good to see you with us tonight. Yeah. And it's, it's good to actually um, help people to upskill themselves, um, give them that little bit more con- confidence in their, themselves as well. Because all too often people can come and feel that there's very little that they can do. When in fact, there's a lot more that they could do with just a little bit prompting and a little bit of help. So this evening, um, we've read the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. How they, they had crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. And a great crowd of people had followed Jesus because they had seen the miracles that he had done. They wanted to see more. They weren't content with what they had seen. They wanted more. They wanted more. They didn't quite realise what it was they wanted more of. What they really needed more of. And Jesus started to tell what they needed. He told them of God. He told them of God's love. And he spent so much time telling them of God's love that the people were starting to get hungry, physically hungry. And there's the point where the disciples are given the the challenge to their faith, given the opportunity to show their faith. And they didn't really know what to do. Some of them just looked at the crowd and said, you're going to have to send them away. There's no way we're going to be able to feed this amount of people. Eight months wages it would take it, I guess. Eight months wages. There's just no way we're going to be able to feed all these people. We can't scrabble that amount of money together. Anyway, someone would have to go down and buy that. And where do you buy that amount of stuff? You know, that's, you know, how do you do that? I suppose if you've been to the shops (laughs) at a time when there's a bit of a scare on for the food, you'll realise how quickly um, it becomes a real problem. And if somebody had gone along and started buying up as many loaves from the bakers as they could, what would get round that village and there would have been nothing left to buy in a very short space of time. What are we going to do? Andrew, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, it says, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? And that was a sensible question, really. He did at least start to answer the problem. He started by saying, this is what we've got. I found this. Now, it would have seemed absolutely ridiculous. I bet the other disciples were standing behind him going, for goodness sake, Andrew. how, How is that even going to begin to meet the needs of all these people? You know, you're going to have one small group over there that's going to get something to eat. They're still going to be pretty hungry, I would imagine. But if that's all you've got, that's all you've got. But at least Andrew started to answer the problem. He brought the boy who had something. And Jesus then told them to get everybody to sit down. So they sat down. And that, again, is another point at which the disciples were being tested in their faith. Some of them could have said, this is just stupid, this is ridiculous. Why are we getting them to sit down? Is this so we can run away? They'll catch us up. Why? Because this is just not going to feed everybody. But somewhere in the crowd, it started. It started. They saw that this boy was sharing. And I imagine that out of their robes, out of their cloaks, people started to bring out what they had and began to share with those round about them. Was it a complete miracle? 
I don't know. It could well have been. It could well have been that somehow God was able to provide over and over from those small loaves, those small fish. But equally, it could be the miracle of the opening of the hearts of the people. Now that's something that we've seen. Mm. That's something that we've seen and have lived testimony to. Where people's hearts have been opened at the right time. Just when it was needed. Their hearts were opened and God was able to bless and use what was given. Individually, it wasn't much. But altogether, God was able to use that to meet the need which came about at that time. The disciples started to distribute. And the people sat and shared and ate together and had their needs satisfied because... A boy had come to Andrew. Andrew had taken the boy to Christ. And there was obedience. And people's hearts were opened. And the miracle was there. Sometimes we look at the state of the world. And we look round about us. And we just see so many things that are wrong. It's been really, really difficult going through the the fuel crisis that there's been and the, the whole what appears to us to be the profiteering of large international companies Scotland I have to say is covered with windmills and yet electricity prices have still gone up it makes no sense to us they talk about they were operating in a global market but if we're producing it surely surely that's something that we should be able to use at a reasonable rate. But it hasn't worked that way. Perhaps some hearts need to begin to be opened. We have seen churches opened. We've seen places become warm spaces to try and help others. It used to be libraries. Mm were the warm spaces that people could go to. But of course many of the libraries have been closed in recent years. What can we do to make a difference in this world? We can look and we can see the real difficulties round about us. We see a queue of people gathering each Wednesday and Friday outside the Salvation Army and on other days outside other churches and other agencies in Inverness. What can we do? It seems as though we can't do much to help. And yet, making ourselves available to do God's work, we've made a difference thousands of times over. What you can do might not seem to be a great deal. It might not seem that it's going to make a lot of difference, but if God lays it on the heart of a number of people to meet a need, then that need will be answered and you are part of the solution. It's one of the things that we've really learned. If God lays something on our hearts, we just have to do it. Don't question him. Don't interrogate him on how it's going to be financed or how it's going to be staffed. We just need to do it. Trust him, for he is the great provider. We're going to turn to our concluding song for this evening. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. It's number 39, number 39. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, hail thee as the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the clouds of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Sadness, joy 
this time together. We look forward to sharing with you every week and uh, we look forward to sharing with you again at six o'clock next Sunday evening. Pray that you all have a really good week. Stay safe. Covid is still out there. Stay safe and uh, we look forward to next week. We're going to share together in our benediction. And so we pray, may the blessed presence of God fill our hearts with the assurances of God's love. May the gracious arms of Jesus Christ embrace us as part of the community of believers. May the Holy Spirit baptise us afresh and lead us into newness of life. And may we always live in trust, knowing that we are God's always and forever. Amen. Amen. You know, every week I'm saying a little prayer to myself as this. I try to light this candle and hope that it works. It did, eventually. Have a fantastic week. Pray that God will bless you and use you just where you are to make the difference that you can in your community. Good night. God God bless. bless you.